Hello, I am Michelle Brosey and I'm doing a case study on Mr. Green. Mr. Green is a fictitious name, but everything that happened to this man, unfortunately, really happened. When we first got to see this patient, um, he had reported having severe headaches all of his life and um, just in the last four months they had become debilitating and so he had found himself unable to work um, just in constant severe pain and uh, him even having nausea and vomiting at times um, so he had been a long time chronic pain patient and so lots of back pain um, neuropathy in his leg um, he had had knee problems and so he had just had a lot of pain his his entire life but something had something had changed um, during this time he would he put on like 40 pounds um, he was already over 300 pounds so that was that was uh, significant um, he reported to us that he had blood pressure problems uh, for a long time, but uh, since he had moved, he really wasn't aware. He wasn't monitoring his blood pressure, so wasn't sure what we were going to find there. Um, so he'd been out of his pills and things like that, so we were going to have to do a good assessment and, and uh, see what we could do for him. Um, so the history of this present illness um, so he's a 50 year old male um, so he was presenting with the headaches um, and he reported that they at least two to three times a week they moved into a migraine um, so as we said four months ago so he's been dealing with it for quite a while um, the pain was described as very sharp starting in the back of his head and then radiating over the top of his head over to the right side. Uh, questioned him regarding any type of aura, but no auras were ever reported uh, with these migraines or severe headaches. Um, he said it did worsen with any kind of exertion. Um, so using our numerical scale, I would have him rate it, and usually his headaches were anywhere from seven to eight, and his migraines were a 10. So, and uh, this gentleman had been used to a lot of chronic pain. Um, and so uh, it was just, it had just become very debilitating. Um, the history that I received from him, um, he had described having uh, hypertension for over 10 years, that he'd been battling obesity his entire life, but this 40 pounds was pretty significant for him. Just It's been less than six months for that. Um, we talked about his back pain, his knee pain, um, talked about that electrical pain in his legs and, and how that uh, really made it difficult for him to sleep. Um, discussed uh, sleep apnea that he had struggled with. It took him a long time to get himself to wear a CPAP. Uh, when he finally did, he realized he still he slept a lot better. And so he had had that for uh, over five years. But he's also suffered with terrible insomnia, which has also worsened. Um, the insomnia would make it where he generally slept maybe two hours a night. His surgical history was uh, knee arthroscopies by lat, uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy, um, carpal tunnel surgeries, right shoulder arthroscopy, and two lumbar laminectomies in his lower back. Um, in, in his family history, mom had AFib, cervical cancer, she had passed away. Dad has had hypertension, heart disease, stroke, diabetes. Then he had a sister who died quite young with uh, severe multiple sclerosis. In his social history, he uh, reported that he had never smoked, never drank, no illicit drugs. Um, he had a, a bachelor's in business administration. He was self-employed in construction industry. Done a lot of things throughout his life to abuse his body. Um, his wife of 30 years was present for the visit, and uh, they had four grown children, nine grandchildren. Um, he'd been very active in his life with his children, with his church, um, but uh, this had just 
changed things for him where he basically stayed in a dark room most of the time. Uh, he denies any depression, but his spouse uh, definitely disagreed with that. Medications were interesting. So he said he had been taking lisinopril 40 milligrams daily, ibuprofen 600 twice a day, Excedrin, two tablets twice a day, Tylenol, a thousand milligrams at bedtime, and melatonin uh, at bedtime. Um, he did not seem to be aware of the excessive Tylenol he was taking as well as the excessive abuse of uh, these type of medications. His allergies are to Imitrex, which uh, is one of our main medications we would use to treat these acute attacks and he gets really severe chest pain uh, as that medication um, the way that it, it works is it constricts the blood vessels and so I'm sure that uh, he just he did he was not able to tolerate that type of medication uh, we ran some labs on him and uh, these were um, our labs that came back that were abnormal uh, his blood sugar was definitely elevated, which we suspected at 220. His uh, liver enzymes were up um, 68 and 56. Cholesterol was up at 278. Triglycerides were up. Um, his thyroid stimulating hormone was up. And uh, on his UA, his CT, we also did an MRI because the CT showed nothing. All of them were negative. Couldn't see a thing. Uh, we ended up doing an ultrasound of the abdomen, and we did see an enlarged liver, uh, which um, made us suspect fatty liver disease. And uh, and so we were glad that we had went ahead and um, uh, got that test done. So now for more of my objective findings when I did his assessment, um, his vital signs, um, his blood pressure was up, not, not too badly, 146 over 90. His heart rate was 82. Temp was normal. Uh, respirations were fine. O2 sat 96 on room air. At that time, his pain was 8 out of 10. He is a 6-foot man, um, 50 years old, and he weighs 360 pounds. He's alert-oriented. He carries conversation appropriately, but I could see in his face he was in pain. And when I would ask him about it, it was it was primarily related to his migraine that was going on. He had pain everywhere, but that was really bothering him. Uh, vision is fair with glasses. He needs a new prescription. You can tell that. Hearing was fine. Uh, dentition was poor. Um, his heart, S1, S2, regular rate, rhythm, no murmurs noted, denies any kind of cardiac history, blood clots. Um, he did have some edema, uh, two plus from the knees down to his feet. Uh, lungs were clear throughout all the uh, anterior and posterior. Respirations were easy at rest, um, but he'd get short of breath when he got up and did any kind of movement around the room. Reports a chronic cough and uh, he has been off of his lisinopril, so I would have thought that that would have been it, but he's been off of it for a while since he switched doctors. And so uh, he, that, those headache, it really hurts his head and worsens it with that cough. Um, abdomen was soft, non-tender, no wincing, no discomfort. Bowel sounds were all there um, and active. Normal stools, no problems with voiding or hesitancy, urgency, nocturia, uh, no problems with heartburn. Um, I assessed his range of motion and, and, uh, you know, um, he definitely hurts in his joints, uh, his, his, his arms. He was very stiff putting his arms up over his head. Um, uh, his head is just bothering him wearing sunglasses in the, uh, assessment room. Um, numbness and tingling down the left thigh all the way to the ankle. Lymph, lymph nodes were appropriate. No adenopathy noted there. Um, when we identified a problem list, uh, number one was to address those migraine headaches, uh, the medication overuse, rebound headaches that we're getting there, the diabetes, the unmanaged hypertension, the fatty liver disease, his morbid obesity, insomnia, neuropathy, and chronic pain. That's kind of our diagnosis list uh, that we come up with. Um, just a little bit of the pathophysiology of migraines. It's kind of interesting. Um, 
discussing so much research is going into it at this time uh, it's one of those things they've really never known exactly what's happening with migraines and uh, but uh, they're starting to feel like they're figuring things out. Um, numerous factors play into what sets them off. It can be stress, lack of sleep, noxious smells, MSG, foods such as cheese or chocolate um, can activate or irritate what they feel the trigeminal nerve pathway. This is causes the cranial nerve number five to release neuropeptides, uh, VIP, substance P, uh, CGRP. These are all big, big names that they're studying. And these cause pain and irritation in the meninges. Uh, they cause mast cell degranulation. They dilate the blood vessels. Um, they activate those nociceptors, which produce the signals that travel along the nerve fibers to create that painful stimulus of a migraine. So a lot of the medicines they're coming out with now, they are trying to uh, attack that GCRP and either stop it from connecting um, and just put a stop to it so that it cannot uh, activate. And so that's kind of what they're thinking is right now. There's some some kind of mixed results on that, but it'll be interesting. It's one of the first things they've actually come out for migraines and not another medicine that they're just using for migraines. And so it's it's interesting the research that's coming about coming coming around. So here was our plan. With our migraine headaches, we'll begin some Topamax. Try that. 25 milligrams daily times a couple weeks. And then we'll progress to 50 milligrams daily till we finally get them up, titrate up to 100 milligrams daily. Uh, discussed treatments such as potential Botox down the road. Uh, Botox seemed to do a wonderful job for a lot of people for migraines. Um, so we, that's, we've got to try lots of things before we get to that. Our propranolol, we started that. It's a blood pressure medicine that also helps a lot of people with uh, migraines. We started that um, and just started that at a small dose, 40 milligrams twice a day. and going to have him turn in his blood pressures to us in a week, call him in. Um, so in, in regards to his medication overuse, his rebound headaches, we instructed on rebound headaches and to stop that Tylenol, Ibuprofen and Excedrin. We educated on Tylenol limits. Uh, for diabetes, we're starting metformin 500 daily. Uh, have him check his blood sugars a couple of times a week. Uh, sent home some things on the, the uh, ADA diet and we'll get him a cinnamon a kit uh, so he's able to have all he needs to be able to check his blood sugars. Um, we talked about the propranolol that we started that. Uh, some fatty liver disease that we identified with that uh, abdomen uh, ultrasound. Uh, we're going to just talk a lot about the diet, the, the diabetic diet, trying to get weight off because at this point where he's at with his liver, that is the best thing to do is to get the weight off so we don't progress into some kind of fibrosis or cirrhosis. Um, and then so with the obesity, we just hope that that will, that we can all get on a plan there. Insomnia, we're going to defer that as well as uh, the neuropathy. We're starting a lot this visit. Um, so we're going to defer that and maybe start some gabapentin next time for that leg and see if that helps. Uh, we also kind of discussed some swimming exercises and things like that to try to help with that chronic pain uh, in his knees and things like that. Uh, well, that is my case presentation. Um, I think we've got him, Mr. Green, well on his way uh, to try to get him under control. Uh, this is my reference list. I hope you enjoyed the case study uh, and that you learned something from it. Thank you so much.